you're looking at the best resin 3D printer that I've ever used. After a few weeks of testing, getting the hang of resin printing and making some things, I have no problem telling you that despite some drawbacks, I think it's an awesome machine. And I'm going to show you why. It's called the Hagers Ultracraft Reflex and you can pick it up separately or as part of the combo package like I have here, which also includes the wash and cure stations. They all work in sync to form what Hagers is calling their one-stop production platform because together with their slicer and their fancy resins, it has everything you need to take a 3D model, slice it, print it, wash it, cure it, and end up with a final product. It has a large build volume, a touchscreen with a good UI, Wi-Fi connectivity, and a really solid design. It's a whopping 25 kilograms. It also solves my main issue with resin printers, which is how messy they can get. This whole ecosystem is designed to mitigate your contact with resin as much as possible, which means there's automatic refilling using a resin sensor and some other cool features with their washing station. It's as close to my dream resin printer that I've experienced. But enough fawning, let's get it set up. This whole setup was a massive delivery arriving in three separate boxes. And for transparency, Hegiz sent everything to me free of charge in exchange for making this video. But they had zero input into anything I say except to correct any factual errors. They also sent over this transparent resin, two ash grey resins, and a white resin. The cool thing about these bottles is that they have fancy nozzles. I'm not sure what this mechanism is called, but it lets you tip them upside down and load them into the back of the printer without spilling. But more on that later. And of course the package also included all the accessories you'll need as well as some spare parts. And inside the printer they included gloves, filters, allen keys, some snips, a scraper, the resin sensor, and some other miscellaneous stuff. The build platform and resin tank were also inside, both of which lock into place with the help of these levers. The setup process was really simple, just plug it in, select your language and time zone, then you can connect to Wi-Fi and sync the printer to your account if you want to use any of the cloud functionality, but I skipped this step and did it later. Then it guides you through leveling the feet and then loading the resin, which was as simple as unscrewing the top lid and then slotting it into the back of the printer. And it automatically detected I was using the transparent PAT10 resin using an RFID tag which was really cool. While I was here, I also added the resin sensor which just snapped into place, then ran through a little calibration test. After that, I downloaded their slicer called Blueprint Studio and then synced the printer to my account. I also downloaded the app on my phone for testing called Blueprint Go. The app, as well as using any of the cloud services, is completely optional. You can instead just send via LAN or use a USB drive if you prefer, but it's nice to have options. Now that we have the printer set up, let me walk you through the entire printing process. For my initial test, I'm going to be printing my Maker Coin, just like I do for every new 3D printer that I get my hands on. I ended up using the one-click slice button, which repairs the model if needed, automatically orients it, then adds support. And then when it finished slicing, I could send it wirelessly over to my printer. You already saw me load the transparent filament in the back, and the resin tank and build platform are already installed, so I can just press start to begin the print, and watch as the gate opens to let resin flow in. The resin sensor we installed previously will then tell the printer when there's enough resin and then close the gate. Normally, on other resin printers I've used, I've had to manually measure the resin and then fill up the tank myself. This print will take a few hours, so let's come back later. And while we're waiting for the print to finish, let's get the other stuff set up. First, I'll set up the Ultracraft cure station next to the printer. It looks a bit like a microwave, which really isn't helped by the spinning plate that we need to add inside. After plugging it in and turning it on, I synced it to my account using the app and connected it to my Wi-Fi. Again, this is completely optional, but it does give the curing station the ability to automatically know the best settings for the curing process based on the last thing you printed, which is really smart. Or you can just use the clicky dial to select a duration manually. Up to you. Before you can put the print in the curing station though, it needs to be cleaned. So to do that, let's set up the Ultracraft wash station. It's important to note that the wash station shouldn't be placed on the same surface that the printer's on, because when this thing's running, it's going to shake like crazy, and that can affect the printer if it's printing. It also comes with two of these wash boxes that sit on top, but I'll show you more of that later. For now though, the print has just finished, which means it's time to get serious. For the following, it's very important to wear PPE, including appropriate gloves, and I also highly recommend eye protection. First, I filled one of the boxes maybe a quarter of the weight with isopropyl alcohol. And then after I removed the build platform from the printer, I carefully used the scraper to remove the print, then placed it into the box with the isopropyl, put the lid on, then placed it onto the wash station and pressed start. This process removes all the excess resin that has coated the outside layer of the print. And when that's finished, it's time for the cool part. Put the isopropyl box on top of the empty box, and then turn the knob to allow the liquid to flow into the empty box. Then you can just open up the top box and remove our print without having to touch any of the nasty resin alcohol cocktail mix. After the print is dried, we can throw it into the cure station. Mine cured for half an hour, 15 minutes each side, 
We do this because when a resin print finishes, the print is still a tiny bit soft and that's why it needs to be hardened under UV light that the curing station emits. The reflective coating and the spinning plate helps to get an even coverage all around the print. And when the curing was finished, it was a really ugly yellow color. But don't worry, this is normal. Just wait 24 hours, come back, and the yellowing is gone. It still has a bit of a frosted look, so to make it even clearer, I bought this gloss clear coat spray paint and sprayed both sides. After drying, it looked way clearer. The accuracy in the small details and secret codes on the coin looks stunning and super clear. And now that we're set up and I kind of know what I'm doing, let's print some more complicated things. I'm going to start with this. It's a back shell for a Steam Deck with a few added features. I've added some extra ventilation holes to see if that makes any sort of performance difference. Plus, I plan on making some big adjustments to the grips later on. The first thing I had to do was split the model in half so it would actually fit inside the printer, because this is a really big model. Then, I manually positioned it, sliced it, and started the print. Originally, Valve released the 3D files for the Steam Deck, then Devon modified it to be hollow, and now I've further remixed it for the Steam Deck OLED and made some adjustments. And please keep in mind, this is just version 0.1 of my design. The model is far from perfect. I know it probably won't fit on the first try and that's okay. We're on a rapid prototyping journey and hopefully we'll learn from the mistakes and improve for the next version. It was maybe halfway through the eight hour print when I noticed something was wrong and then I felt a tiny bit silly. Do you see how this part of the print is moving up and down when it moves around in the resin? That's because I didn't properly support these thin sections here and they're bending under the pressure. But rather than cancel the print, I thought I'd let it continue and see how it goes. If you look closely, you can see the issues here. These lines are caused by the layers not lining up perfectly due to how they moved while printing. And to be clear, this was entirely user error due to my slicing. These lines don't affect any of the functionality. It just doesn't look as good as it could have. And after washing them, I sanded the bumps from the supports, starting at 120 grit and finishing at 600 grit. After curing them and waiting 24 hours, like my Maker Coin, I hit them both with a clear layer of spray paint. To the touch, these parts feel amazing. Thanks to the sanding and the clear coat, they're super smooth. But because my sanding wasn't very good in some areas, under the right lighting, you can see the scuff marks from the sandpaper, even though they're impossible to feel. This gives the parts a frosted look, and I should have kept sanding to 1200 grit to make it as transparent as possible. If you look past my poor sanding though, the print quality is really nice. Look at these photos. If I chose any other color to print this in, it would have looked perfect, but because I chose the transparent resin, you can clearly see all the mistakes I've made. After removing the back shell of my Steam Deck, I placed my version on, and like I expected, it didn't fit. Remember, it's just version 0.1. But this whole experiment has told me everything I need to do to make the next version even better. I needed to change some measurements on the model, add more supports while printing, and I needed to sand the print better. And when I did all of those things, this is what I got. Splitting the model into three parts was a massive help, and the fit was so much better this time around due to the changes I made. I still need to print the grips for each side, and I want to try a transparent version again when I'm ready, but I'm out of time for this video, so that'll be its own project video sometime in the future. I ended up printing this version in grey, and to swap colours, I had to remove the existing bottle just a tiny bit so I can press this button in. This lets the last few drops of resin stuck in the nozzle to drip out into the tank, and when that's done, I can clean everything up and swap the ash grey resin into the back. After my Steam Deck shell, I also printed this. It's a resin version of my brick mouse that I made in my previous video. The accuracy was spot on, otherwise the bricks wouldn't have been able to snap into place. Hagis have said that their aim with this printer was for it to be on par with injection molded products. I didn't believe it was going to be that good until I saw this part. It is damn near perfect and incredibly smooth. I wouldn't be able to tell you that this was a 3D printed part unless I looked really close, and I made it. Now that I've tested the Ultracraft Reflex combo by printing a few things, let's get to the review section. What do I think about this printer and its accessories? Well, I say this as someone who has always really hated 3D printing with resin. This 3D printer has solved a lot of the issues that were preventing me from getting into resin printing in the first place. The auto-filling resin bottles and the resin sensor combo, as well as the hands-free washing station with the two-bucket drainage system, are absolute game changers for me. To me, that's the biggest feature of these machines how they make things a lot less messy and a lot safer as a result. It is not cheap though, but for what you pay, you're getting sleek premium machines, great quality prints, and what I'd call the cleanest and smoothest 3D printing software that I've ever used. Like you can instantly tell that a lot of effort has been put into the UI on both the printer and the slicer, and this is unlike a lot of other 3D printers and slicers that I've used. And this makes things a breeze for beginners like me, or even for more experienced people who just need to get a job done as painlessly as possible. It seems that Hagers have a big focus on business customers, and this might explain why their whole system is closed loop. 
you're locked into buying Hager's resin if you want to use the auto refill features, and you're locked into using their slicer. This might not be a big deal for businesses who don't really care about cost as long as they get great results, but for hobbyists who like having options, it might be a deal breaker, so keep that in mind. I have to really emphasize the user friendliness of both the software and hardware during every step of the process has made me genuinely excited to be 3D printing with resin. And I've never felt that before because I've always been worried about all the mess and all the steps involved with resin printing. It just makes things so much easier than what I've come to expect. And that's why I think the Hager's Ultracraft Reflex combo is an awesome package. The quality of my prints has been great as well. It had no issues handling the precise functional parts I needed from it, but to me, that's just an added bonus. I'm definitely going to be using this setup to print many more functional parts for many more projects to come. I'm going to keep honing my resin printing and post-processing skills so I can make more transparent parts like the next version of my Steam Deck shell that look as good and as clear as they possibly can. But that's all the time I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.